All right, John, uh, very interesting. So um, a couple of questions. One is, um, in, the, in this way, it's similar to an important sampler where you correct for that P probability. And so yeah. I guess the technical question, or rather maybe a policy question is, would you envision a situation where for certain individuals, certain actions are prohibited, say, by law, and you would get a P of zero there? Yeah. Um, how would you handle that? Yeah, so the system actually allows you to choose a variable number of actions per event. So if there's only a subset that are relevant for any individual event, that's fine. Okay. Um, and that is essentially a part of the context. All right. Another question is um, this underlying D over um, uh, individuals and the reward? Yeah. Do there. you assume that to be stationary? Well, the proof, if you look at it closely, holds point-wise. So it's not necessarily that D is stationary. And in fact, the, the slide that I skipped, um, you know, oops, what am I doing? Let's, eh, let's go here. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Yeah. So for something like MSN, the interest in a news story actually varies pretty quickly. And so the non-stationarity is a very essential part of the problem. If you, so this does address non-stationarity and pretty effectively. Thanks. For me, I don't even know whether this makes sense, but you might imagine that for one type of individual, you should have one type of policy, and for a different type of individual, you should have a different type of policy, and you might try and learn that as you go along. So my question is, is that already in this framework, or is it an easy generalization of the framework where the policy is kind of a mixture over policies and you're learning about the mixture weights? So I think this is time? already in the framework, essentially, because a policy is a mapping from features to action. The, to the extent that you know an individual, it is through the features. And so uh, if, if one mapping of features to actions is right for a subset of the features and for a different subset of the features, you're just defining a policy. Now, there's a question about whether or not your representation can actually fit that effectively. But, um, and the truth be told here, we're not using a terribly complex representation. It's, uh, so I think we have like 10,000 non-zero features. We tend to use some, something which is linear or, or not too far from linear in terms of representation. Uh, but lots of people are working on deep learning and there's no reason why that can't be used because we know how to reduce to any supervised learning algorithm. So maybe it sounds a bit crazy. So as a user, I find myself too addicted to internet. <laughs> right, I think maybe your, your design is too effective. So I'd like to have an option that to, for you to help me to stay away from internet. So the long run, I can be more helpful for you. <laughs> I, I think we need to work with Susan here. I, I think that the, <laughs> the, the kinds of, of but interventions the to create that habits, I think it's a really good idea. And I think it's a good, good area to be working in. No, but the beeping is probably not enough to extract me away. So I think something like I can sign up for a program. It's user choice. And then by some time, you, turn, you, you take the internet away from me. So, so I, um, I, have so I can myself. sign up. I mean, you cannot give everyone, but people don't have instant self-control. Can they have long-term self-control? Yeah. Uh, that would be nice. I, I don't need that. There are, in fact, programs that do this, and I, I have a, actually have a trick for myself and my kids at home. Um, I, I have a cron job that just shuts down my computers at nine o'clock. Oh, does it? <laughs> um, so, can you uh, explain how, uh, if you know, if it's doing iterative learning and you are getting, of course, in the web thing, maybe it's okay, but. Um, like if I'm thinking on one person and I'm doing iterative learning on one person, that non-stationarity, I'm going to be learning something different every time. So how, I don't understand what we mean when we say we can deal with non-stationarity. Maybe we mean non-stationarity in the context. So the learning algorithms are operating in an online fashion. Mm -hmm. And that means that they will in fact forget the past. Oh, so you are? Time. You, have, you are having them forget the past. Yes. I see. Not explicitly, but implicitly it happens because they're always updating to deal with the present. And you're choosing your learning rates in a manner which 
I see. Implicitly, it forgets the past. Right. So they're, it's using learning rates that like exponentially discounts the past. In some sense, a learning rate sort of does that. Uh, well, I don't know about no? exponential, but it, it, it it's some schedule sort of there, effectively. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, it, it very much depends how far past is the past. So it very much depends upon the form of your features and, uh, and, and, and the learning, how you choose your parameters. So uh, in the case of MSN, we know that a, a policy that's um, two days old substantially harms performance. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's forgetting pretty quickly. But there were other, I mean, this is getting externally used now, and there's other companies that are playing with it. And what we observed there was that um, if you had, a, so, so the MSN has kind of the dense features. Uh, they have profiles and whatnot. Um, but there's other places where you're using sparse features. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, what uh, keywords are in some title or something like that, right? So these are features which you don't have very many for any individual event, but th there's many different possibilities across the events. And thus, the model it can end up being quite a bit larger. And there, of course, you observe that you don't want to forget so quickly. I mean, you would prefer to remember things for at least a week or two um, before any kind of serious forgetting happens. Yeah, a question um, about use. Um, uh, there is a claim, and I'm sure it's correct, that different media have different preferences about what they show in the news. So I have friends who claim that they always show when a, a civilian is killed by a police officer, but they don't show the reverse. Yeah. Um, and with the selection that you're doing, I only get to see some of the possible menu. So I can't tell if the news media that I'm using is biased or whether your algorithm is presenting me an unrepresentative sample of what they're doing. Is there a way in your algorithm for me to turn that off so I can see the full menu, let's say, in the New York Times first four pages, and let me decide then whether or not I want to move in a particular direction? Yeah, so um, is there a way to turn things off? So there's sort of two different modes you can imagine using the system in. One of them is reordering a set. But the other one is more like a hard choice is being made. And then just because of the way the interface works, in a hard choice, you don't get an option to see the menu because it's just not there. Um, there's, there's no interface for that. There's, there's no way to represent a set of possible choices. So let, let me tell you an example. So um, internally, we, we have a demo where people were using one of these uh, electroencephalographs, consumer grade, uh, with the decision service to interpret brain waves, or at least muscle twitches, one of the two, doesn't really matter which, and turn them into typed letters. So somebody who is completely paralyzed could actually type. Okay, so th there's no way to represent the set of possible letters that you could type, or that the system just has to kind of work in that setting, right? There's no, there isn't a good option available. Now, when you're ranking things, as hap is happening to some extent on MSN, then you can, you, can, you can just see things. And what's happening there is there's a different order. You can eliminate things by just coming to MSN from a different browser or, or, or shift control P, right? So it's private browsing. You, then you can see what happens with sort of the generic order versus what happens with your order. The, the truth is, though, that with MSN, the, the set of articles that we're optimizing over is not very large. It's like 20, 50, something like that. And they're curated by editors. So just in the terms of the pool of articles that they choose to throw in, I think that is, that's the strongest bias that you're observing. Um, I think that's going to generally be true for people using this kind of system, because you cannot explore over too many alternatives. But what you're doing is you're, you're reinforcing my bubble. Potentially, uh, MSN is actually a, uh, MSN is at least a site, which I think is not particularly deep uh, on either side of the bubble. Um, and so uh, if, if a relatively neutral site uses this, then I think that 
maybe that's good in the sense that people go to relatively neutral sites. If, if a, uh, uh, a very bubbly site uses this, full of fake news or whatever, then crazy. Yeah. I think that that's not solved by this algorithm. Could you solve that by optimizing something? Yeah, I think so. optimizing something different is the right answer. So, I mean, if you optimize clicks, right, that's the problem, right? If you're just optimizing clicks, you're going to reinforce the bias. But if yeah. you say, I want to optimize for diversity, for example, you can put that in the machine, right? Yeah, and, and um, I agree. I, I think that the better choices of what we optimize are uh, the solution that we have to really be looking at. Because the, 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 the optimization semantics is, is very powerful in the sense that the system just gets better and better at that over time because people are always trying new representations or new features or whatever. So if you can encode what you want in your goal, then the rest will follow. Let's uh, thank John once again and then move on to the panel discussion.